Hi, and welcome to the second video in our building a cybersecurity lab for beginners using VirtualBox. In our first video, we actually configured our VirtualBox environment, which involved also creating uh, some networks that we have connected our first Kali box, which we also did in the first video using a pre-built image from the Kali.org website. If you guys haven't seen that video, I highly suggest that you go and see it. There will be a link to that video in the description down below, which will get you guys all set up in order to be able to follow this video. So as you can see here on that Kali box, we do have two network adapters, one that's bridged, one that's on that internal network. I go over how to create that in that first video, because in this video, what we are doing is we are adding some we are adding a machine to our vulnerable network, uh, which is not exposed to our host. So the host can't see those and those machines can't see the host, but they can see our Kali attack box. And that's because we are going to be bringing up a Metasploitable 2 machine, which is a very vulnerable machine. You should not expose that machine at all uh, because it does have a ton of different uh, vulnerable services. And that is perfect for us to practice our ethical hacking skills, our cybersecurity skills, our penetration testing skills. So we are going to be using that to stay within the legal confines because you should not be hacking machines that you do not have authority to actually do that ethical hacking on. And that is definitely illegal. You always want to make sure that you get permission from the person that you are trying to pen test or do some ethical hacking on or even bug bounties there are usually some rules uh, following those as well so now that we've gone over all of that let's go ahead and let's first download the metasploitable 2 disk image and then configure that on virtualbox so let's go ahead and open up your favorite browser and your favorite search engine this could be google this could be DuckDuckGo, anything like that and you're going to do a search for Metasploitable 2. And it's going to be the first link that you see from Rapid7. It should be docs.rapid7.com. And then there is a Metasploit and then Metasploitable 2. And then this will take you to a page that has two links. One of them is a search for a uh, search, a source forge link. This is going to be the link that you click on. It is a very small, it's not a huge download. It's not super small. It is 800 megabytes. It should not take too, too long to download. I've already downloaded this already on my machine. So if I just go ahead and we can open up the downloads folder, you can already see that I have this Metasploitable Linux 2.0.0. All you're going to want to do is right click that and then click on extract all and extract that to your downloads folder. So now I have a Metasploitable Linux folder, and then in there, there will be a Metasploitable 2 dash Linux folder. And then in there, you will see your virtual machine disk format file. Now we're actually going to leave that there for now. What I actually like to do to create this machine to just have a nice folder structure in the VirtualBox VMs, just to keep it really nice and standardized what i like to do here is i like to create a new machine in virtualbox and we're going to name it metasploitable 2. we're going to keep the folder the exact same so it's going to create it in the virtualbox vms we are not going to be attaching a iso to this the type is going to be uh, linux the subtype is going to be other linux and then we're going to keep that as other linux 64 bit and then for hard disk here, we are actually going to say, do not add a virtual hard disk. And we're going to click on finish. And then once we are there, now we're going to click back on settings here. And then in storage, we are actually then going to go ahead and we are going to add a hard disk image here. So you can see here controller SATA here, we can add um, a hard disk. And then we can go ahead and click on add at the top here. Now you're going to see that this is going to be empty. So we can actually go ahead and close this. We're going to go back to our downloads folder where we had the metasploitable disk image. And we're going to copy this 
and we're going to copy this into the C folder users, your user folder, the virtual box VMs. And then there you should see your new VM that you created Metasploitable 2. And then here you should only have a definition and a VBox prev file. You're going to paste that disk format right in there. And then you should be able to then just go click add. And then in there, you should now see your Metasploitable 2 disk format. And then you're going to click on choose. And then in here now, we can go make our other changes. So what I like to do is I like to go back to general first. And I like to always give my machines roughly, especially this Linux machine, I like to give it two gigs of RAM. You can definitely give it four if you have the available resources. Uh, but anything more than two is kind of overkill on this one because there is no GUI interface, so you should be fine. And then the processor here, we should see it is at one. I'm going to give it two. Um, that's just because I have 16, but definitely one is actually more than enough here as well. And then we can go ahead and we can click on the network section here. And then our adapter one, we are going to want to put that as internal network. And we're going to make sure that it's on the Vuln Labs internal network. And the promiscuous mode, we're going to want to make sure that we do the allow all. This will allow us to do that traffic capture and traffic analysis on this machine. And then we're going to click on OK here. And then we should be able to click on start here. And this machine just takes up a little few seconds to boot up here. And then we should see it boot up pretty shortly here. Now, this is one machine where you might get caught. Um, if you click on it, you might lose your mouse. And we're going to see that in just a few seconds here. I'm going to give you guys a little example here. So now my mouse is gone. Oftentimes, people panic in this situation because they think that they can't get out. And then they will often just reboot their computer or do like an Alt F4. All you need to do is hit the control button on the right of your keyboard and that will escape your mouse. So if you do accidentally click on it and you lose your mouse, the right control button on your keyboard will release that. Now to log into the Metasploitable machine, it's actually just right in the banner there. It is the MSF admin for both the username and the password here. So we can actually go ahead and log into it. And we can actually see that we do have everything there. And if you do an IF config here, we can see here that our address is 172.30.1.25. And of course, we have our loopback address, but we do have this address here. So now on the host machine, if we actually just go ahead and test this out here, let me just open up this right here. And we do a ping to 172.30.1.25. We actually cannot communicate with that VM from our host machine, which is awesome. But if we go ahead and we go back into our Kali machine here, and we just put in the password that we changed on it, and we go ping 172.30. Ping 172.30.1.25. You're going to see that I can actually ping the Metasploitable 2 machine from my Kali box. And that is because the Kali machine is on those two networks. And the Metasploitable is only on the vulnerable network, which only the Kali machine has access, not the host machine. All right. And then you can even test it out real quick. If we do an N map and we do a SN just to ping all the available machines here and we do it on that Vuln Labs network, which for me is the 172.30.1.1 slash 24, we can actually do see that we do get an Nmap scan report for the host of 172.30.1.25 is actually up. So if we just did a Nmap dash S capital V, and then that specific address here, 
25. And we actually run that. We are going to get a full port scan of that host. And you're going to see that we do actually have a lot of services running, a lot of ports that are open. And some of them are pretty easy to expose. But we're going to be taking a look at that at a future video. This video was just to configure that, show you guys that we can get those two machines communicating and not communicating with the host machine as well, just to make sure that it is secured. So in the next video, we're actually going to be setting up the Metasploitable 3 machine, which is a Windows Server 2008. Now, the reason why I separated the setting up Metasploitable 2 and Metasploitable 3 is Metasploitable 3 does have quite a setup um, involving installing another piece of software. And oftentimes now when you go to set that up, there are often error messages. And I'm going to show you guys how to bypass all those error messages and get that machine up and running. And then we can actually start exploring, configuring our own machine on this network in order to help us also secure it and monitor so we can actually monitor our own ethical hacking and our own penetration tests to learn what that looks like in traffic analysis logs to be able to also detect it maybe in our own home environments or our work environments because the best way to learn how it looks like is to actually perform it and monitor it on a lab environment. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to stay tuned for that. Also, if you guys want specific machines, you guys can let me know in the comment section down below and we can add those to our cyber security lab because I want this lab to also have a lot of input from you as the community because I do have a lot of space on this new mini PC so far. It's been holding up quite well. Uh, so we can definitely have a lot more machines on here running and we can test different things out as well. So be sure to leave those in the comment section or if there's a specific tool that you want us to use, maybe not a machine, but just a tool, uh, please let us know as well. Also, just because these are the machines that I'm bringing up in the Vuln Labs network, you could bring up all sorts of machines. You can bring up your own Windows 10 machine, Windows 11 machines, some newer Windows server machines to test out your hacking skills afterwards to see how much you've actually learned as well. This is something that I use throughout my Try Hack Me uh, courses and Hack the Box. When you learn something, you go and perform it on your home lab. And this way, it just kind of sets up that learning and solidifies it with your own theory and your own examples, not just following a walkthrough or doing just the simple challenge machines. This gives you a little bit more flexibility and a lot more learning abilities in cybersecurity. All right, and that is it for this video. Be sure to stay tuned for that next video. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.